Morris has walked one, struck six. Now the pitch to the right handed batting, Brian Hunter. Swing a ground ball of third, up with it is Pondy Rillo, the throw across the diamond for the out. Hunter grounds the third, one down in the ninth. And here's Greg Olson. He's popped the second, line to right, and struck out. One out and nobody on here in the Braves' ninth. Each team squandering a golden opportunity in the eighth inning. The Braves had runners on second and third with nobody out, couldn't score, and the Twins had the bases loaded one out and couldn't score. Here's the pitch by Mars to Olsen. Swing and a smash up the middle. Here's Newman behind second to glove it on the bounce, slows him out. Nice play by him. Newman getting a good jump on that one and grabbed it on the bounce behind second. Throws out Greg Olson, two down. It'll bring up Mark Lemke. He's ground of the second, single to right, and fly to center. Mark Lemke, 10 hits and 23 at bats, hitting 435 in the series. Switch hitter batting left. Mars into the line of delivers. Lemke takes a slider over for a strike. Oh, yeah. There's the windup and Morris's pitch. Lemke pass swing strike. Oh, and two. No ball. Two strike count to Lemke. Pitch is a ball a low. One and two to Mark Lemke here with two out on the top of the ninth. In the bottom of the inning, the Twins are due to have Davis, Harper, and Mack. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. There's a winder by Morris. And the pitch to Lemke in the dirt. Two and two. Well, it's hard to believe that after all the cliffhangers we've had in this series, four out of the first six games have been real cliffhangers. We would have another one here in game seven. Nothing, nothing in the ninth inning. Two out, none on for Atlanta. Ball two, strike two to Mark Lemke. Here's the lineup by Jack Morris. His pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him with a wide fastball. His seventh strikeout. Three up, three down. We go to the last of the ninth. The Braves nothing. The Twins nothing. This is the World Series on WCCO. I know I need my brakes checked, but come on. I work nine to five. One Auto Center knows how busy you are. Sears. That's why Sears offers a free road handler brake inspection seven days a week, every weeknight, every weekend. I'm hanging on to this car, so I want work that's guaranteed. And Sears road handler brakes carry a lifetime warranty for as long as you own your car. Ask a Sears brake specialist for details. Hey, who's going to back you better than Sears? John Madden here. You know what would make me like baseball even more? No rainouts. That way, guys would slide into second and get covered with mud. Now that's exciting. So is the Walker Advantage muffler. It doesn't quit on account of rain. It's the only muffler with Absorbite, a built-in rust fighter. Heck, the Walker Advantage is the most advanced muffler you can buy. So it keeps on performing, even in the snow. Hey, there's an idea. Baseball in the snow. For your nearest Walker Advantage installer, call 1-800-422-2484. Another day, another dollar. That's how it goes. But when it's all gone, the Discover Card can help with a cash advance. In fact, the Discover Card Cash Network can provide money in over 30,000 locations in all 50 states, 24 hours a day. Which means you never have to be a day late or a dollar short. It pays to discover the card that pays you back. 
What's an Army Cavalry Scout exercise like? <laughs> Hold on. Now, when you're tracking an armor force, you follow the signs. Uh, like these fresh tracks. Likely river crossings. Shh. Listen. Hear them? Now, here come their scout vehicles and their armor force. Mount up. We'll call in some firepower. Be all that you can be. Paid for by the U.S. Army. Only once in the history of the World Series has a seventh game been decided by a 1-0 score. That was in 1962 when the Yankees beat the San Francisco Giants and Ralph Terry beat Jack Sanford 1-0. And only twice in the history of the World Series has a seventh game gone to extra innings. Twins try to win it, Herb. There's a foul by Chile out a cut on a fastball from Stanton. Chili's called out on strikes in the second, fly to left in the fourth, hit into a 3-6-3 three, three double play in the sixth. Batting right-handed now against Mike Stanton. He is two for three. Batting from the right side. Did one of his two home runs batting right-handed. One strike to count. Here's the set by Stanton. In comes the pitch. Inside with a fastball. One ball, one strike. Feels deep around to the left. Stanton looking down to Olsen for the sign here with a 1 1 count. Here's the set. And out of the set, delivers to Davis. Swung on a high foul, back out of play. One and two. Mike Stanton, as a rookie, was in 74 games with the Braves during the season. Five and five, seven saves. Good fastball, good curve. Getting another baseball right now from plate umpire Don Denkinger. One and two to Chili Davis. No score last of the night. Twins have stranded runners in five of the eight innings they batted. And the Braves have stranded runners in six of the nine innings they batted. Here's the pitch to Chili. Wide of the plate. Two balls, two strikes. Two two to Chili Davis. Overall, just three for seventeen in a series, but again two for three, batting from the right side. And Stanton. Okay, it's a sign here from Greg Olson. The left-hander kicks and throws, and it is swung on a foul back out of play. Still two balls, two strikes. Game number seven of the World Series, and neither team has been able to score. What chances they had, though, in the eighth inning? Ball two, strike two. Billy Davis. At the plate against Stanton, the 2-2 pitch is swung on a foul down the right field line. Still two and two. Each team coming up with a double play in the eighth inning. And each team made its most serious scoring threat of the game. Mike Stanton, six feet one, 190 pounds, from Houston, Texas. He's 24 years old. He works out of the set, and the 2 2 pitch to Chile swung on another foul off to the right. And it's still two and two. Mm -hmm. 
Right now, we'll pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the 1991 World Series on WCCO, St. Paul, Minneapolis at 830. In 25 seconds, Central Standard Time will be 1030. It is 48 degrees. Here we go. Ball two and strike two to Chili Davis as Stanton kicks and throws. Swung on a fly ball hit into right center field. It's going to fall in there for a hit. Played on the bounce by Justice. Davis will hold with a single. Good at bat for Chili Davis. He fouled off several pitches, then hit one in the right center for a base hit. Jarvis Brown will run for it. Jarvis Brown will run for Chili Davis. So Chili leaves the game one for four. Brian Harper will be the batter. That sure looked like a gapper, but Justice did a great job getting over there to cut it off. And Chili with a long single. Pena is in the Atlanta bullpen. Nothing doing in the Twins bullpen now. Brian Harper at the plate. Fleet put as Jarvis Brown pinch running for Davis. Harper single to center, line to right, ground to third. And Stanton out of the set, throws to first base. Jarvis gets back. Wins with the winning run at first base. Nobody out. Bobby Cox staying with his left-hander. Mike Stanton. Here's the set. Go to first base again, and Brown gets back. There's the set. Stanton delivers. Harper around a bunt takes a high fastball. Almost a wild pitch. That was so high. One ball and no strikes. One and nothing to Harper. Checking now with third base coach Ron Gardner, who's looking into the Twins third base dugout. Each team now with seven hits. Mike Stanton from the set. The pitch to Harper. He swings and he misses. One ball, one strike. And it obviously took the bunt off there, and Harper swung through a fastball, one and one. Breen coming over for a word with Mike Stanton. Field straight away on Harper. Here's the set by Stanton. A look over to first base and the pitch. Harper bunts this one out towards the mound and it gets away from Stanton. Everybody's safe. Brown goes to second. between the pitcher Stanton and the first baseman Breen. Stanton had to track the ball down halfway between first and second and he seems to be hurt. Runners on first and second now nobody out. Mike Stanton down on his knees out there between first and second base. Looks like Pena is going to come in. like in that situation, standing the pitcher was going to cover the left side of the infield. And a good bunt by Harper to the right of the pitching mound as he got it past the first baseman Bremen. Now, Stanton walking off the field being helped off, but he's in obvious pain. Not sure what he did. 
But Alejandro Pena will come in. Now, they'll give him as many warm-up tosses as he wants because Stanton is leaving because of an injury. And the Twins with runners on first and second. Nobody out. Credit Harper with a hit on that bunt. And with a pitching change, we have a break in the action. We'll pause now for these announcements. This fall, the history, the thrills, and energy of World Series Baseball return to Minnesota. And following every Twins game, the St. Paul Pioneer Press Sports Department will set your sights on all the action in a separate special World Series section. From Jim Caples. During the entire time, and Bobby had some parting words before he goes back to the dugout. Stanton leaves with a slightly twisted left ankle. It looks like he's okay, but he has been taken out of the game. Brian Harper, who had only two sacrifice hits during the regular season, called upon to bunt, and he gets a base hit as he pushes one past him on the right side. Stanton chased it down and caught the ball near the second base area where Lemke plays. Shane Mack, who was called upon for two sacrifice bunts during the regular season, in all probability will be trying to bunt the two runners ahead here. Nobody out, and the Twins with an excellent chance to win the World Series in the bottom of the ninth inning. Pena basically the fastball pitcher, one of the toughest pitches to bunt, a high fastball. And a Mack is around the bunt, and he taps the ball fouled on the first baseline. One strike. At the plate tonight, Shane is single to center, popped the second, and he tried to bunt his way on to the seventh inning. Pendleton made a nice play and threw him out. Pena in his third appearance. Four innings, one run, four hits. Hasn't walked anybody, has six strikeouts. 31-year-old Alejandro Pena, who is a free agent after this season. Had his first blown save in 15 attempts in the game at Atlanta. Here's a bouncing ball to the right side. Lemke throws it the second one. Back to first base. Got the double play. Jarvis Brown goes to third. Boy, that was a fine double play. Lemke, Belliard, Cabrini to get the 4 6 3 double play. Lemke never hesitated. He knew immediately what he wanted to do. He made a quick pivot, got the ball to Belliard, who came across the bag. The throw back to first in time to get Shane Mack. Now, Mike Pagliarulo. Oh, what drama here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Well, we'll see what they do with Pagliarulo, the left-handed batter, the winning one to third base and two out. Bags is hit. A ground ball to first with a pitcher covering in the second inning. Fly to deep center in the fifth. Ground to third in the seventh. Newman is due up next. They're going to walk it. They'll put him on. Be an intentional walk here to Pagliarulo. And Paul Sorrento is coming out to bat for Newman. Paul Sorrento. Pena giving up the intentional walk here to Mike Pagliarulo. Of course, his run means nothing. The winning run, Jarvis Brown at third base with two out. There's a third wide one. Boy, double plays have certainly come into prominence here in the last two innings. And now, Pena with a fourth wide one for the intentional walk to Pagliarulo. Sorrento coming up as a pinch hitter for Newman, who did not bat in the game. He ran for Bush after Bush got a pinch hit single for Gagne last inning. Sorrento had a fine year at Portland in the Coast League. And with the Twins, he batted 255 at four homers and 47 at bats. In the series, he's had just one plate appearance over one. Actually, has had one base on balls, just one official plate appearance. Big huddle at the mound of everybody in the infield out there with Pena. 
I think the reason that they huddle and everybody talks is because they can't hear each other if they try to yell at each other, even in the infield. The noise is so deafening. Sorrento has played in two games and has had one plate appearance. He's also had a walk, and he's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. So runners at first and third, the only one that matters right now. Jarvis Brown on third base. Paul Serrano at the plate. They play him deep and straight away. Lemke, the second baseman, out in short right field. And the pitch by Pena. Serrano swings and he misses. Boy, he had a big cut. One strike. Have Kent Merker, a left-hander, and Jim Clancy, a right-hander, in the bullpen. I'm not sure why right now. No score. Last half of the ninth inning. Alejandro Pena from the set position delivers, and a swing and a foul back. Oh, and to the count. Twins now with eight hits. The Braves have seven. Pena wants another baseball. No ball, two strike count. The pinch hit of Paul Sereno. Pena moving out the dirt in front of the pitching rubber. Sereno steps into the batter's box. Shortstop Belliard is playing very deep. There is the set by Pena. The right-hander kicks and throws. And a swing and a foul back. Pagliarulo ran to second, but ball is fouled off, and it's 0-2. I think they're not going to pay too much attention to Pagliarulo right now. Jarvis Brown on third base. 0-2 to Paul Sorrento. Pena on the rubber now to take the sign from Greg Olson. Here's the set. Pena's pitch. And it's swung on and foul back again. Pagliarulo took off. And the ball's fouled back by Sorrento. I tell you, Herb, when you look at the placement of the Braves infielders right now, especially Belliard at short and Lemke at second, Lemke's in shallow right field. Bream is very deep at first. Belliard is over towards second and very deep. He's in shallow left center. Any little kind of number. And Sereno, who even though he doesn't run well, could beat it out for a base hit. Alejandro Pena delivers on a swing and a miss. He struck him out. So another threat goes down the drain. No runs. Two hits and two left. At the end of nine, the Braves nothing, the Twins nothing, and this is the World Series on WCCO. These days, Jack Morris is still out there as we go to the 10th. It's the third extra inning game in this World Series, the second in a row. The Twins won an 11 last night, and it is the second time in the history of the World Series that a seventh game has gone to extra innings. Back in 1924, Washington beat the New York Giants 4-3 in 12 innings in Game 7. Back in 1912, in an eight-game series, it was the Boston Braves beating the New York... or Boston Red Sox beating the New York Giants 4-3 in the eighth game of the World Series. One game had ended in a tie. Here we go to the top of the tenth inning. Jeff Blauser batting for Belliard with a high foul behind the plate, and Hopper didn't see it. Now he does and makes the catch. He picked it up somehow near the backstop. Jeff Blauser batting for Belliard fouls to Harper. And there's one quick out here in the 10th inning. Blauser now one for six in the World Series. And it brings up Lonnie Smith. He fly to center, walked, had a bunch, single down the third baseline, and single to right. On a check swing, he blooped one into right. 
Aguilera throwing in the Twins bullpen now. Here's the lineup by Jack Morris and the pitch. A half swing. That's a strike. Nothing in one. No ball. One strike count to right-handed batting Lonnie Smith. And Morris winds up and delivers. High a ball. One and one. The Braves no runs. Seven hits. No errors. The Twins no runs. Eight hits. No errors. Twins have had half of their hit total in the last two innings. Jack Morris has walked one batter, struck out seven. Now the wind up in the one one pitch to Smith. Swing and a foul on the ground to the left. One ball, two strikes. Barry Pendleton on deck. And the Twins still have Rick Aguilar in the bullpen. He's been up for quite some time. He's just kind of tossing right now. He would be ready if Morris were to allow a Braves base runner here in the 10. One out, nobody on. Here's the windup. The 1 2 delivery in the dirt. Bouncing away from Harper. 2 2. Valerio Lower third. Leas, the third shortstop the Twins have had in there. saying that Stanton left the game with a pulled muscle on the left side of his back. Evidently, when he fielded that bunt by Brian Harper, he strained his back and pulled a muscle. Two and two now to Lonnie Smith. Morris okays the sign from Brian Harper. They play Smith fairly deep and straight away, and here's the 2-2 delivery. Swing and a miss. Got him with a fastball. The eighth strikeout for Morris. Oh, the fastball right down the pipe, and Smith simply swung through it. Here is Terry Pendleton. He's bounced the first, fly to the left, popped the short, and doubled the left center in the eighth inning. When he apparently got an extra strike on a 1-2 pitch, he swung at one in the dirt, but Don Denkinger ruled that it was a foul ball, that he made contact with the ball, and it hit the dirt before Harper caught it. And the pitch here, a change in the dirt, ball one. First half of the 10th inning. And no score with two out for Atlanta. Nobody on. Pendleton having a good series, hitting 379. He has 11 hits and 29 at bats. Morris looking for the sign. Outfield straight up on Pendleton. Here's the pitch. Swing a bouncing ball towards short. Leas gloves it, throws it to Herbeck, and the side is up. A 1 2 3 inning for Jack Morris. We go to the last of the 10th inning. Wins nothing, Braves nothing. This is the World Series on WCCO. State Farm says. Jeff Blauser stays in the game. He's playing at shortstop. He pinch hit for Rafael Belliard. Alejandro Pena will face the top of the batting order for the Twins in the bottom of the 10th inning. Dan Gladden, Chuck Knobloch, and Kirby Puckett. And still no score as we go to the bottom of the 10th. 15 hits in the game, 7 for the Braves, and 8 for the Twins. There are no errors. Herb. All right, Dan Gladden. And Pena winds up. Here's the first pitch. Fastball swung on. A fly ball hit into left center field. That one's going to fall in for a base hit. And it is going to be a two-base hit for Dan Gladden. Side fastball to Dan Gladden hit a fly ball to left center between Hunter and Gant. It fell in there, bounced past Hunter. Gant had to field it, and Gladden ends up with a double. He broke his bat. Matter of fact, 
the meat part of the bat went all the way out towards shortstop. And it was a gutsy base running gamble by Dan Gladden. He was in to say in the second safely just ahead of the attempted tag by second baseman Mark Lemke. Now it's Chuck Knobloch who has slide the right twice to center once and single the right on a hit and run in the eighth inning. Hit number nine for the Twins. Chuck Knobloch batting 308 in the series. Facing Alejandro Pena here. They have Merker, a left-hander. Clancy, a right-hander in the bullpen. There's the set by Pena. Look to second. And the pitch to Knobloch around the bunt takes it high. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. The third inning in a row, the Twins have had the leadoff man on. Randy Bush had a pinch hit single in the eighth leading off. Chili Davis, a leadoff single last inning, and now a double by Gladden. Nothing, nothing, last of the tenth inning. Third baseman Pendleton, first baseman Breen playing even with the bags. Here's the set by Pena. Now block around the bunt takes the strike. One and one. One ball, one strike. Gladden on second with nobody out. Pena leaning in to take the sign from Olsen. Blouse of the shortstop trying to get in behind Gladden to keep him as close as possible. Here's the set by Pena. And the pitch to now block around the bunt. He taps one down the third baseline. A good bunt. Pendleton throws it the first for the out. Gladden to third. third base one out and you have Kirby Puckett coming up with Herbeck on deck and again they have the entire infield huddling out there at the pitching mound. I think the question here Herb is do you walk one or two in a row. I wouldn't be surprised if they walked them both. I wouldn't if, either because the twins do not have Chili Davis now remember Jarvis Brown is now the twins designated hitter he went into run for Chili and the bench players left for the twins our junior Ortiz, Gene Larkin, and that's it. Greg Olson now indicating they will walk Puckett. He'll get an intentional walk. The second one given up by Payne the third by the Braves pitchers. Kirby tonight. Has hit to the pitcher, struck out, walked twice, once intentional. And it's ball two. So if they're walking Puckett here, I would certainly strongly suspect they will also walk Herbeck, the left-handed batter, to set up a force play situation and pitch to Jarvis Brown. Gladden watching intently at third. He has about a three-foot lead. Should Pena throw one away, of course, the Twins would win the World Series, but he didn't, at least on that intentional walk. So Puckett goes. Here comes Herbeck. And Greg Olson is showing all sorts of signs that they're planning on walking Herbeck, too. Herbie tonight has flied to right, been hit by a pitch, fly to center, and lined into a double play. Now, as yet, there's no one in the Twins on deck circle. Now Gene Larkin comes out. And they're going to walk her back, too. So they'll walk the bases loaded and set up a forced play situation. Pena giving up his third intentional walk. Gene Larkin will bat for Jarvis Brown. 
just simply amazing, Herb, the amount of people that have had a chance to be the hero of the seventh game of the 1991 series for the Twins. Jarvis Brown could have scored the winning run. Paul Sereno could have had the game-winning hit. And now it rests on the shoulders of Gene Larkin. A lot of opportunities have slipped away for both teams. So it's ball three now to Ken Herbeck. And there's the fourth wide one, so the bases are now loaded with one out for Gene Larkin. Batting for Jarvis Brown. Right now, we'll pause here. Ten seconds for station identification. This is the 1991 World Series. On WCCO, Minneapolis-St. Paul at 8.30. In 20 seconds, Central Standard Time, 11 p.m., Twin City temperature, 48 degrees. Pitching coach Leo Mazzoni going out to talk to Pena. Gene Larkin, one for three in the series. Batted 286 during the regular season. 255 at bats, two home runs. They have to play the outfield shallow here, of course. Now Terry Pendleton wants to relay some word to left field of Brian Hunter. Well, the base is loaded. One out. Last of the tenth inning and no score. Dan Gladden, the winning runner, third. Kirby Puckett's on second. Ken Herbeck on first. Twins have the right man at third base and Dan Gladden. He's an expert base runner. The outfield for the Braves is going to play shallow. Yeah, they will have to because nope. It won't do them any good to catch a fly ball if it's deep enough to score the run. Wow, look at Hunter in left field. He is very, very shallow. Now okay. Pendleton's going out to talk to him again. I think he's playing a little too shallow there. Well, he's, he's in much too close. So the Twins need a fly ball. Oh, a base hit of some kind to get the run in. Larkin, of course, batting left-handed. No score last of the 10th. Alejandro Pena leaning in to take the sign now from Greg Olson. Here's the set. And his first pitch to Larkin. Swung on. There it is. A long fly ball into left center field. And it is going to be a hit for Gene Larkin. Gladden scores. And once again, the Minnesota Twins are baseball's world champions for the second time in five years. It's the world champion Minnesota Twins, and the crowd loves it. Celebrating on the field as they have regained baseball's world championship. What a series this was with the Atlanta Braves. Gene Larkin driving a fly ball to deep left center. No chance for either the left fielder Hunter or the center fielder Gant to catch it. And the crowd still going wild. Two hits 
left three on in that fifth inning. Well, one thing that is a bit different from 87 here in 91, Tom Kelly, the manager of the Minnesota Twins, is on the field. Remember, in 87, he stayed in the dugout. All the players are out hugging each other, along with the coaches and manager Tom Kelly. He's not in the midst of the biggest huddle of the Twins players, but he is out there, and he's hugging all the rest. As the Twins celebrate this world championship. Still on the field. Yes. Celebration uh, calming down a little bit, but not so much from the crowd standpoint. They still love it. Gene Larkin, who had had a sore knee for some time, but unable to uh, play on a regular basis, became a hero tonight with that base hit to score Dan Gladden with a winning run. Now here's Tom Kelly running back to the dugout, waving his hat to the crowd. Gets a big hug from his son as he gets to the dugout. Very emotional moment. Now many of the Twins players' wives are joining out in the infield. This crowd is just going absolutely wild. And Herb, not to be lost in all of this, and it has just been announced that Jack Morris is the World Series most valuable player was without question one of the grittiest pitching performances ever in the history of the World Series by the 36 year old veteran right hander Jack Morris just amazing I, I don't remember when the last time in the World Series a starting pitcher went more than nine innings but he came out there for the 10th I, I think you might have had to take a 20 mule team to get him out of that game. <laughs> But he pitched three great games. He had one no decision, although he gave up just a run in six innings. And Jack Morris, in 22 innings against the Braves, 23 innings, 23 innings allowed only three runs. <laughs> he was doing more or as much celebrating as anybody. And this is the second time that he's been on the world championship team. He was for the Tigers world champions in 84. But I'm sure there was... Uh, no drama that could even approach this World Series when Morris was with the Tigers. They beat the Padres four out of five. Well, as the Twins celebrate, let's give a lot of credit to the Atlanta Braves here, too, because as you stated in your exhilaration of calling the winning hit for Gene Larkin, this was just a spent World Series. And there's Gene Larkin hugging his wife Kathleen at home plate. <laughs> She finally got down here. <laughs> and what an embrace by those two. Well, you know, the seven games, we had those five cliffhangers. I don't know how you could have had a more closely contested World Series if you try to put everything down on paper as far as personnel. The Twins, of course, won the first game 5-2, to two, and the Braves had a blowout in game five, 14 to five, but everything else, I mean, it was just about as close as you could get it with two extra inning games. One game decided in the bottom of the ninth inning. And uh, two extra inning games here and one in Atlanta that went 12 innings. I might add that the owner of the Minnesota Twins, Carl Polad, his wife, Eloise, both down in the field right now and both a part of the celebration here simply amazing the twins have won their second ever world championship and they did it in a span of five years 87 to 91 well you couldn't be happier for a fellow like gene larkin he's had a lot of injuries in his career playing with a bad knee here oh boy what a hit he came up with Now the Twins, uh, most of them made their way back to the dugout into the clubhouse. So, after a lapse of three years, the Twins 
of regaining the World Series trophy. They are the champions of the baseball world. And we're going right now to the uh, clubhouse with an opportunity to see if we can pick up some of the feed here with Jack Morris being accepted the World Series Most Valuable Player Trophy. Here we go. To a new Chevrolet Astro van that will be donated to the charity of your choice in your name. Congratulations. Thank you. Jimmy, thank you very much. Have you got enough strength left to hold that trophy? I mean, <laughs> we talked all away. night. The Minnesota Twins signed Jack Morris, and the word that came into play was horse. And you were a horse that I think about 135 pitches, and it didn't appear that you lost anything. I just didn't want to come out. Uh, the guys kept fighting. I got to congratulate the Atlanta Braves. What a what a great series. I mean, they fought us tooth and nail with a five-one run games. These guys in this room. Somebody had to go home a loser, but nobody was a real loser in my mind. It was two of the greatest uh, teams that fought so hard all year long, and I'm just proud to be a part of it. Yeah, nobody really was a loser. I'd like to know what it felt like. I mean, you come off the mound with a, an emotional inning, and yet your ball club doesn't score, and you gotta you got to dig down and go back out there again. What were those feelings like, seventh, eighth, ninth inning? Well, there's a lot of guys that influenced me over my career about uh, battling the guys and don't worry about what we do offensively because sometimes the pitcher has no control over that. But uh, perseverance, I guess. I just didn't want to quit, and somehow we fixed All right, Jack Morris, 1991 World Series most... All right, that's uh, Jim Cott with the uh, presentation of the Most Valuable Player Award to Jack Morris. Now we're going to Mike Woodley downstairs with Dan Gladden. Mike? And I am with Dan Gladden. Dan, is it better the second time around? Uh, I think it's nice that we had a lot of new faces on this team. It's always nice to win. Uh, I'm just glad this series is over. It was emotionally draining. And even down to the last game, I don't think anybody's really a loser here tonight. You lead off the 10th inning with a double. Did you have any doubt with the broken bat double that you were going for two? Well, I got out of the box real good, and I know it was in, the, in between the gaps, and it bounced, and I guess took a high hop, and I had to go for it. We've been playing aggressive baseball like that all year, so uh, I just had to, you know, try for it, take a chance, and it worked out. You're on third base. Larkin's up with the outfield in. What's your thoughts when a Larkin makes contact off Payne? He's hit a sack fly just like he did, and he happened to hit it deep enough to where, where they couldn't even make a play on it. Go celebrate. You deserve thank it. Thank you. I will. <laughs> Let's go back upstairs, guys. That's Dan Gladden. All right. Thank you, Mike Woodley. Uh, the celebration continues. Many of the players are still on the field. They haven't even gotten to the clubhouses yet. Kirby Puckett is still there. Randy Bush, Shane Mack, Kent Herbeck, Prince pitching coach Dick Sutch. It's just a, a wild celebration here, as expected with the Twins winning the 1991 World Series. One to nothing over the Atlanta Braves. And Herb, it's so interesting that both the two that we've talked to so far or heard from so far, Jack Morris and Dan Gladden, have talked about the fact that so much credit should go to the Atlanta Braves because there really shouldn't be a loser in this 1991 World Series. It was really some series. Well, that's for sure. The Twins uh, had a great improvement. Uh, they finished last in their division in the American League, but the Braves made an even bigger improvement as far as uh, the number of games they'd won compared to last year when they, they won only 65 games, I believe, last year and won 94 this year. Kind of a... A ragtag team put together. Nobody gave them uh, much chance to do very much this year, but some of the uh, free agents that John Sherholt signed uh, worked out well, like Terry uh, Pendleton, Sid Bream, although he was hurt for a while, and, of course, Dave Justice, a rookie of the year. And the big uh, thing with the Braves, of course, was that great starting uh, pitching. And then uh, when they lost Baron Gear, they came up with Alejandro Pena, who had more trouble in this World Series than he'd uh, had all year in the National League. But uh, they are a scrappy ball club, uh, a good ball club, and certainly I just don't see how you could have had, a, have had a closer game than the one here tonight. It could have gone either way very easily. Only the second time in the history of the World Series that a seventh and deciding game has been decided by one run in a one nothing game. As mentioned, back in 1962, the Yankees beat the San Francisco Giants by a final score of one to nothing when Ralph Terry bested Jack Sanford in that one nothing shutout win for the Yankees. But this is only the second time and only the second time that a seventh game had to go to extra innings. And you have to go all the way back to 1924 when the Washington Senators beat the New York Giants 
four to three in 12 innings to win that World Series four games to three. We're standing by at this moment. Let's go back downstairs for the presentation now. Faye Vincent to Carl Polad, the owner of the Minnesota Twins of the World Championship the Trophy. Fans who are here appreciate the effort you made and the great effort of the Braves. Two superb teams. Finally, let me say the president wants to congratulate the president of the United States and invite you to the White House for a ceremony where he can congratulate you personally. We're delighted for you. Carl, you have my personal good wishes. All right, thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Carl Polad, the owner of the Twins, and I'd like to get a word from Andy McPhail. We've shown a lot of pictures of the players, of the manager, of the coaches, but I think the, the man that was probably the architect of this 1991 Minnesota Twins team that took some chances and signed some players and got some money's worth with this man's money. Andy McPhail, your feelings right now. Well, thank you, Jim. I just want to take this opportunity to thank all our scouts, our minor league instructors and managers, our front office staff, particularly Tom. His coaches did a great job, the players, and Carl for taking a giant risk for us. I'm glad it paid off. Thanks for everything. All right, Carl Polat provided the money. Andy McPhail uh, provided the players. And Tom Kelly was the man that put the team together and ran it on the field. And Tom, your thoughts about not just this team, this whole series and this night tonight, an unbelievable scene. It was a storybook uh, ball game. The whole series was like a storybook, going to play it out, Chapter 7. The Braves were just outstanding. I don't know which team played better if one did or one did not. And, and uh, by rights, you probably should cut it in half and give it to the, half to the Braves and half to us. And they were just great. And we're just fortunate to, to win this ball game. It was a storybook ball series and I'm proud of all my players and I'm proud of the Braves. They were just outstanding also. A very emotional embrace for Jack Morris after this. Back here in the uh, radio booth with Herb Carneal, John Gordon, Ted Robinson. You downstairs? Hello, hello, John. Yeah, yeah go ahead, Teddy. Uh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say that Randy Bush is here, but a couple of players just walked away. So we'll be trying our best to get our hands on somebody here in the next minute or so. Well, there are some that are still on the yeah. field, Teddy. If yeah. you can grab them, we, just let we, us know and, uh, sure will. and uh, butt in on us because we do want to hear from, I see Mike Pagliarulo and Randy Bush, as you had mentioned, Carl Willis, uh, some of those Chuck Knobloch still right. there. Here comes our, uh, our hero is on his way here right now. We can uh, pull him away from a rider or two. Gene Larkin is about three steps away. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll, we'll be patient. Hang on. Here he comes. <laughs> we had to wait ten innings for the win. We can be waiting. We can Larkin, be patient. You waited how long for that chance to be a World Series hero? Well, I've been, uh, you know, I've been dreaming about that my whole life. And uh, I went up to the clubhouse in the sixth and seventh inning, uh, stretching and swinging, hoping that my opportunity would come. And I knew in that inning I was going to hit for Jarvis if the uh, situation occurred, uh, a situation arose. And so I was ready. I knew they were going to pinch hit for Puck and Herbie. And, uh, you know, they wanted to pitch to me because I'm uh, cold off the bench. So I just wanted a fastball. I wanted a strike. And I wanted to hit it in the air. And that's what happened. When you go up in a situation where there have been chances and chances and nothing has happened, how tightly are you squeezing that bat? What's running through your head? And I surprised myself because I wasn't nervous up there. I just told myself to relax. And I've waited my whole life for this opportunity. I just wanted to swing and a strike. I wanted to get him to throw me a strike high. And that's what he did the first pitch. You saw the ball leave the bat. What goes through your mind? Yeah, I knew it was over Hunter's head or in between the alley. So I knew it was a world championship for the Minnesota Twins. What do you think about when you think about this World Series? Uh, I just think about the tremendous game. We had six out of seven tremendous games in this series. And it has to go down as one of the best of all time. And I'm just glad I was a participant in it. It's great to see you get your chance, Gino. Congratulations. Thanks, Teddy. All right. Gene Larkin, the World Series hero. Ted, where are you right now? We are, you? are in the corner of the Twins dugout in the midst of a lot of bedlam, as you can hear, John. Yes, it sounds like you're in the locker room. No, no, we're on the field. We're in the corner of the dugout, and uh, Mike and I are going to continue to try to round up some players as best we can. And what we'll do, John, is throw it back up to you, I think. And okay, we'll and when, we'll wh signal you when we have someone. When you get somebody, just let us know. Okay. Herb Roy Smalley is with us right now. We'll uh, get a microphone for Roy and get uh, some comments and some analysis analysis on his thoughts on the Twins World Championship. Well, uh, Roy, it was a great series uh, in 1987 when you were a member of the Twins, but I don't think that we could approach this series as far as, as drama. I don't know how you could uh, even equal this if you had a Hollywood script. I think it was just a privilege for anybody that got a chance to watch this uh, series in person. It was a privilege to watch it. What a marvelous example of what Major League Baseball is all about, and I agree totally with Tom Kelly. Uh, it's hard to say that there's a loser of this World Series. The Atlanta Braves were absolutely phenomenal. Coming here in the seventh game, 
and uh, battled them uh, to a one nothing loss in, in 10 innings. Phenomenal achievement. We'll get back to more comments from Roy, but right now down to the dugout and Mike okay, Woodley. As soon as we can. Mike, are you there? Mike Woodley. Yes, I am here. All right, go ahead. Do you have anybody with yes, you? Yes, I am here with Brian Harper, who caught Jack Morris, the World Series MVP. And has Jack ever been tougher this year, Harp? I don't think so. It was uh, he was just phenomenal. I mean, he he deserves the MVP. And it was just unbelievable the pitches he was making and and as strong as he was getting. It was just it was just a historic baseball outing. Do you think he was going on, on, on guts, or was this talent out there? I think uh, both. Guts, talent, everything. You know, it was just, uh, I don't know. Uh, TK I was thinking about taking him out, and, and Jack said, no, I, I want to go out there again. You know, and he just, he was just phenomenal. It was a phenomenal series, and just a great way to close a great series. Got to talk about you, and it's been a great year for you. and. There's been so much talk one way or the other. You reflect on this world championship right now. What are you thinking about? Well, I'm just so thankful uh, to the Lord for the opportunity to be be out here. I just, uh, I'm, I'm so happy. It's it's almost beyond words. You know, I, I'm just so thankful. And I think back of all the, the hard times and the struggles in the minor leagues, and uh, you know, almost quitting, and uh, you know, and just, I th you know, I'm so thankful to my wife and my kids and. And, uh, you know, just for the opportunity that, or just to, for the, them helping me to persevere and keep on playing, you know, and uh, it was just, it was just such a rewarding feeling to, when we scored that last run, just to, everything just kind of flashed in front of me. Guys, you got a quick question for Brian? He can hear you. All right, uh, Brian, uh, this is John Gordon. Congratulations to you. Thank the you, bun, The bun single in the ninth inning. I mean, uh, you'd only sacrificed <laughs> twice all season long, and yet you laid down just a perfect butt. What gut-wrenching play in the later innings of this game? Oh, I, it, it, you know, I just uh, was trying to get the ball, to get the guy over to second. You know, the pitcher was falling off the mound, and I just tried to kind of get it in between him and the first baseman and just kind of work out, and then now, unfortunately for us, uh, Shane hit a ball right at the second baseman, and, uh, you know, we got a double play, but uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. It was just unbelievable. Hey, Brian, can you hear me? This is Roy Smalley. Yeah, how you doing, Roy? I'm doing great. Congratulations on a terrific uh, year and a wonderful series for you and all the guys. Can you talk just a little bit? I watched Jack Morris pitch about the best game just flat-out pitching of anybody I've ever seen. And can you talk just a little bit about that? The thing that separates Jack, I think, from everybody else is his refusal to give in to tough situations. And it, it seemed like just when uh, the, the situation got really tough, he came in through with some of the best pitches I've ever seen. Can you talk a little bit about about those two innings? It was just unbelievable. I mean, uh, it just seemed like he reached back. And it was he was throwing as good in the 10th inning as he was in the first inning. He just kept reaching back. And getting a little extra, and every time we got in trouble, he would uh, he would just make a great pitch. Uh, we had that bases loaded, and our second and third, nobody out, and he made just two just super pitches to Ron Gant to get him to hit a little grounder to first. And then when Sid Bream came up there, he just reached back and threw three 